Hey everybody, this is Charlie from Charlie May Music. This is a follow-up video to the last video I made, um, where I was just comparing the before and after building my drum booth. And the cool thing here is we had a nice learning from the last video, which is saying, hey, in the real world, you're probably not going to have a dry drum track and just throw it right into a mix and call it good. You're going to be doing some processing. And that's what this video is here to address. So we're going to be doing a comparison of four different um, levels of treatment. So the first is just the raw um, uncensored tracks. Uh, just that way you can have that in your ears so that we can get a good fair comparison. The second video, the second part of the video, is going to be talking about parallel compression. And what that is, it's when you have a hyper compressed track with um, an EQ that's really boosting up the low end, really boosting up the high end in order to get the drum some nice fatness, some nice girth, really get some nice sizzle in there. And you have that sit under the dry track, just under it, so that way you get like a little bit of added power, uh, but you keep the definition and the clarity of the raw track. So that's the first one of actually doing treatment, but the second part of the comparison. Third part of the comparison is doing the exact same thing, but we're adding a plate reverb. And what that does is that takes that same sizzle, takes that same fatness, but it adds a little bit of room sound to it. So that way you don't feel like you're just, the drums are just floating in space. They sit a little bit better. They sit a little bit cleaner because realistically, I'm usually going to be putting a little bit of plate reverb on my drums so they sit well on a track. Then the last one, we're having a little bit of fun. Uh, we're taking advantage of the 1176 Nuke Trick. I know that's something that you typically would use for uh, on a room mic, really crush the, the snot out of it. Um, but to try and get that John Bonham sound, but for that, but hey, we're having fun here. And for those of you that don't know what the 1176 trick is, is it simply just pushing down all the different ratio knobs on 1176. Helps to get you a little bit of extra saturation, a little bit of overtones, a little bit of extra crunch, a little bit of uh, musicality to typically a room mic, but hey, what's life without a little bit of fun? I know it's an overhead mic. I know that's not really in the scope of this video, but what's life without a little fun? Uh, but without further ado, I want to hear uh, Y'all's thoughts. Looking forward to hearing some discussions in the comments, but I hope you guys enjoy the video. Talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye. Hey everybody, thank you so much for taking the time to watch the video. Um, just a couple quick final thoughts before we conclude. Um, I think that what this test really showed, at least to me, was that by treating your room, you make the room, you make the overheads start acting like overheads as opposed to room mics. Because with the 1176 trick, even though it was meant kind of almost as a meme, as kind of a kind of a lull as a joke, uh, what that really showed me is that you take your overheads 
from sounding like really awesome room mics to sounding like really nice controlled overheads, like a really nice, honest, like even under extreme compression, um, you, even under extreme compression, like the, the treated room, like it didn't, it didn't break. Like it didn't break the envelope. It was still nice, clear and articulate. Whereas uh, when you, when I'd use the same amount of compression on the untreated room, man, that thing just broke down. Like it was just almost inaudible and it sounded like a really good room mic. So I think that was the main takeaway that I had, but I want to hear your thoughts. Um, do you think that, um, did you like the parallel compression? Do you like adding the plate reverb? Um, and also 1176 tricks, are these all things that you've heard of? Is there, do you think that there's something that I missed? Is there something that I could have done to make the test better besides the playing? I know I'm not a drummer, but, <laughs> uh, but besides like some of the obvious stuff like that, is there, what else do you, what would you like to have seen to make this test even better? Um, let me know in the comments, uh, as always love talking to y'all. love y'all. Hope you have a great rest of your week. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.